This interview was recorded live at the 2024 Native Arts Festival. Bernadette Smith talks about her father's legacy, reintroducing Native foods, and MMIP. The team at the Boxcar Joe Show wants to thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned for more content and interviews. We all have a story. What's yours? All right, we're here with the Boxcar Joe Show in uh, Windsor Town Green at the Native American Cultural and Arts event. And I'm here with a special woman. She's the daughter and bloodline of a local cultural icon. I'm going to go ahead and let her introduce herself. Hello, Chimai. And my Iwa Toshishima Emta Bernadette Smith. And I'm uh, happy to be here today. Good to have you, Bernadette. Uh, you know, your family is, is well known in the area. And your dad was one of the carriers of tradition and culture and uh you know the true measure of his contribution to the native community still hasn't been felt and i don't think it will for generations but uh would you expound on uh the contributions of your father things you've learned from him and just his impact on the culture uh in our in our native community here yeah of course so my father david smith as you said was a cultural icon here for the local pomo people throughout northern california and throughout california i would say itself many people knew who he was he was what we call the kabe which is the rock man the rhythm holder also he was given the toto ko'o which is the feather dance songs that you see a lot of the native pomo people doing here in northern california from Essie Parrish and others like her and that generation before him. They left him with that uh, great responsibility to carry those songs and dances. And, you know, he left, he led his whole life doing that. And um, he continued until his last days doing that work. And, and we're very proud to be able to continue that and be part of that and make sure that his legacy is uh, remembered in a good way. Absolutely. So I know that you and your sisters are involved and have picking up the baton mm. and are running with it to the best of your ability. Um, how, how has that transition been for you guys? I mean, you guys have always been accustomed to having your, 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 your father there as a strong, strong leader with strong medicine. And now, you know, he's, he's went on to the, to, to the other side. Um, how, we, how have you guys been dealing with that? So luckily for us, my father had kind of set up us for this time. Um, should his time come to pass on, he kind of worked with all of us individually throughout his life and throughout our lives, um, teaching us here and there like little lessons throughout conversations we've had with him that kind of prepared us for this. Um, I know we all shared these special moments with my father. Me personally, um, we spent a lot of time, I would drive him to dialysis. So in his um, ending time, the last few years, he was on dialysis. And um, it was a really hard time for him and for us together as a family. But during those times, he would kind of um, teach us songs or tell me a little bit more about the songs, critique my singing of the songs, mm -hmm. and really um, kind of foster that within us. Within each of us, I would say my sisters probably all had that connection with him. But since his passing, it's been kind of hard to feel his void. Of course, like you said, he is such a strong spirit within the dance group. But one thing that happened with him being ill is that he transitioned slowly into not being able to participate in the capacity that he used to. And that was kind of hard for us. The most hardest thing, I think, for me was to watch him transition in that way, not being able to interact with the dancers, doing his rock and moving with the boys and, you know, doing... We had these little funny things that we do together when I would sing and maybe I wouldn't sing the right note or something. And he'd look at me and make these big eyes at me. Or if he liked what he was hearing, he'd like, you know, just these little um, communications, nonverbal things that would happen between me and him. So I always try to hold on to those things. But it's been definitely hard trying to fill his position as far as a rock man. Right, right. I remember when I was a young person and uh, I went to Cook Middle School and your dad came with his group to dance for like a school assembly. And it was a big thing, man. And not only just for us native kids, but I mean, every every ethnic group in the gym was captivated by his his. He was a showman, man. He really was uh, yeah. uh, 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 something special, man. And I remember um, there was just this newfound respect from non-natives towards us after that. You know, like wow, these people are they're serious about their work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I always remember him from back then. And uh, yeah, he was something special. So. 
Uh, not only do we believe that, but the city of Windsor um, also believed that your dad was special, and uh, they did something historical. Um, I don't think this ever been done in these parts, but um, do you care to, uh, c- can you elaborate on what just happened yesterday? Oh, um, yeah, such a beautiful day yesterday. So the town of Windsor, along with the um, Progressive Tribal Alliance, they got together and kind of were looking for a good candidate to um, represent the Pomo or Native people of our community here in Sonoma County. And they had a couple names being uh, brought and tossed around, but the one that kept coming up was David Smith. And for great reason, right? Everybody knows him. Everybody connects with him. He was such a lovable guy and a likable guy. And so much, like you said, some charisma right. but was unmatched, right? right. So he um, he was nominated through, through a selection of people to be um, considered for the park. And in fact, he was considered for the park. And they named it David Smith Memorial Park yesterday. So wow. it used to be Pleasant Oak. Now it's, if you Google it, it'll show up David Smith Memorial Park. And I know that's going to be a very uh, time of, of uh, or a very proudful moment for you and your family and your, your, your grandchildren will be able to look back and know that their, their bloodline and their legacy is going to be carried on long after everybody's gone from here, man, especially in one of the most bougiest towns oh, know, in Sonoma right? County. You yeah. know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you got this native guy. I mean, it's it's phenomenal. I was I was really ecstatic when I heard about that. Yeah, it was such a beautiful time yesterday. So we went out there, and it was like meant to be. They have all this beautiful um, wetlands right there on the on the park. They have huge grassy areas for for big times, <laughs> or any kind of native gathering there. Yesterday we went. We had a big barbecue. Had a, oh, I'd say close to 150 people, maybe a little bit more than that show up and and really just celebrate my father's legacy and the work that he did. Some people shared some beautiful words about him and really touched my spirit yesterday to be able to remember him in that way. And like I shared yesterday, it's about when I'm gone and my great grandkids are here and I'm, I'm not here to tell them these stories and, you know, they'll know when they go to that park, they'll be able to know that their grandfather was a great you know, person to be respected and, and to be honored in that way, because it's the first in its time to get a park named after a Native American in Sonoma County. Yeah, yeah, long overdue, long but so overdue. deserving. Yeah, so deserving. Um, so, I'd, I'd like to talk about uh, the acorn season. Oh yes, yes. So that's coming up in the fall. So, have you ever gathered acorn? I haven't. Okay, have you ever ate acorn? I have. Okay, so what's honestly? What's your opinion about I it? I wasn't too keen on okay, it. Okay, so, you know what? That's that's kind of what we get from a lot of our native people, and that's kind of about the work that I love doing is getting that first foods back into our system, back into our diet, and kind of reindigenizing the native people's diets that we get because after we're so used to like eating, you know, this processed food, things right. like that, lots of sugar and things added. Uh, it's hard for us to get back to that that palate that it takes to kind of enjoy those kinds of first foods. You need to develop it again. Yeah, and it's it's really hard. And um, a lot of people eat some tan oak or acorn mush that hasn't been processed, what I would say, correctly or thoroughly. Thoroughly. Right. <laughs> and that's, it's a long process. So sometimes people try acorn mush, and then in our language, Costa Pomo, we call it to'o. Um, when they eat to'o, They uh, don't really like it because it has a lot of bitterness from tannin, tannic acid, so tannins that are in the acorns. And if you don't leach them out, which is like a washing of the acorn um, grains, it can be bitter and it can turn a lot of people away from it. So I think it's really important that we get some really good stuff for people to try first. Absolutely. Yeah. No, that's awesome, man. Um, No, I'm, I'm totally game to try it again. You know, I tried it once and... You know, I was like, okay, yeah, I might be good off this, but maybe it wasn't prepared right. Yeah, maybe it wasn't prepared right, and maybe it wasn't tan oak. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. Yeah, so tan oak is the best, and you'll see a lot of acorn representation here at the Arts Festival today. As you know, acorn represents the California Indian, right? Every tribe has the acorn in their emblems, in their casinos, on their shirts. I mean, it is who we are as California natives, so... I seen some beautiful artwork here today representing the acorn, and I, I love that. I love the acorn. Anything acorn, I'm like, I want it. So yeah, no, yeah. totally. Yeah, so we have an acorn festival that should be coming back this year in Point Arena. 
which is a beautiful ceremony. Um, and I always want to say that I had asked for guidance and permission from elders before I even uh, brought this idea up to bring uh, a celebration of the acorn out because it is normally done in Kashaya. I heard that it was done over like speaking with some elders in Point Arena many, 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 many years ago. Um, so being able to bring that ceremony back or it's more of a celebration back about the acorn season. And um, it happened a few years ago. I'd say eight years ago was the first time we had it. And it's been happening ever since. And it's a beautiful, beautiful gathering. And I, like, again, I want to say that I did ask elders permission and speak with other um, practitioners about having this festival. Right. So um, it it came out beautiful. It came out beautiful. And everybody comes and celebrates the acorn. And I really wanted just to get people gathering acorns uh, back in Mother Earth and really putting their feet in the ground and hands in the dirt and really seeing how beautiful that can be, that connection. Right. Right. Yeah. No, that's awesome. That's great. Um, so I wanted to touch base with you in regards to the murdered and missing women, uh, excuse me, Indian women. Um, I unfortunately uh, know what it feels like to lose a sibling. Um, it's one of the most painful experiences. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, know, I know you've you felt it twofold. I, I knew your sister. We actually uh, were in the same grade together. Okay. Delia. Oh, okay. Beautiful. And, yeah. Yeah. She was she was awesome. We were actually friends and stuff. We knew our we had a common relation. Oh, yeah. And, uh, our so, sister. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we were always close like that. Um, but so... Again, however much detail, however much you want to share, I'm totally leave it up to you. But I would like to shine some light on the situation that happened in the Point Arena uh, oh. reservation there. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to share because, you know, you can never share the story enough. And so we always are happy when we get people to uh, talk, talk about it. Um, Yeah, so I'll go ahead and talk a little bit first about my sister, Nicole Smith. So she was murdered in 2017 on November 17th in my home on the Manchester Reservation. I was home. um, We were there sleeping. So we had what the police call an attempted home invasion um, happen at my home. We had four children in the home, two teenagers in the home, and also four adults. And my sister... Obviously, she was murdered. She got shot. And my other niece, Star Brightman, also got shot. She was 15 at the time. Um, She didn't sustain life-threatening injuries. But one thing that happened that was kind of stuck out mostly with her being injured was when the police finally did arrive, over an hour wait happened. Um, She was escorted off the property, off the reservation, with a bullet wound at 15 years old, Mm. scared for her life, you know. Um, the ambulance, they wouldn't come on the property, the reservation, which we didn't really understand why. They made her walk so far. You know, she was with just, a bullet wound. Yeah, with a bullet wound. And um, they were scared, I guess, to be on, on the res. So that kind of let us know that they don't really know the res. You know, it's just like any other place. There's no need to not offer us the same help that you would offer anybody else. You know, we all are human. We need assistance. We need help. That's what we call for. Right. You know, we, we shouldn't have to be escorted off. And obviously, when they want to come on the reservation, they come on for whatever reason they want. Oh, yeah. You know, nothing holds them back if, if they want to come and, you know, bully around on the res for mm-hmm. some reason or, or flex power. So at that time, they, they didn't uh, help us out. So kind of had a big problem. And that's the Mendocino County Sheriff's Department. And from what I've learned that a lot of the people that weren't involved in my sister Nicole's investigation, which has gone cold, aren't there anymore. And that's kind of what keeps happening. They have people in and out of that department like, oh, we don't know. We have to get updated on the case. We have new people. It's been turned over to here, turned over to here. So that's kind of what's been going on with my sister's case. So right now, as I said, it's a cold case. Um, We've been doing a lot of... um, I'd say like grassroots efforts trying to bring attention to her case. There's been a lot of things that we want answered. Things that, you know, they don't require a full-blown um, whodunit. You right. know, we just right. want something that was a little bit more to the liking of, um, you know, how many cars did you search? How many people did you interview? How many, you know, 
leads did you follow up on? These are things that Khadijah Britton, the um, young lady who's still missing from Kovalo, they had a press conference on her behalf, and they were able to give that kind of information to the families and to the public. And that's kind of what we want as the Smith family. We're looking for um, just some answers as far as what the police department has done. Yeah, what efforts, <laughs> what actions have you taken place to uh, solve this 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 homicide? Yeah, right? yeah, and and that doesn't, you know, we're not asking them to solve it. We're asking them to solve it, but right now we're just asking for the bare minimum. Like, throw us a bone here, you know, like. What What'd you, you guys do? Well, yeah. Because I have friends, you know, they, they didn't say they were questioned. Uh, a lot of people on the reservation, they, they never said that they were even interviewed, you know? And we're like, why not? Why didn't you ask the neighbors if they seen anything, you know? Like, they just didn't even. And if they did, we, we want to know who and, you know, how many. At least how many. Right. Not who, but right. how many people did you guys interview? How many man hours went into my sister's case? Right. And when it comes to that... Basically, what we've gotten from them is that uh, they don't have enough funding uh, available to to work on all these cases. And so that's where things have be, are being passed right now with Assemblyman James Ramos. Um, he's been doing things to pass, to get some money put into these departments, specifically for missing and murdered indigenous people. So that's a big thing. That's a big win. Big O for big Senator o. Ramos. Oh, oh, and we respect him so much. Oh, man, he gets people fired up, that guy. Right. Have you ever heard him speak? I haven't. Oh, man, wait till you get him. Wait till you hear him. You're going to you're gonna fall in love with him. He's amazing, and he's doing amazing things all over uh, Indian country, not just with MMIW, but other things. Um, I think he did the, well, feather alert, that has to do with MMIW. Right. So that's the new alert, like an amber alert, but for Native people. So gotcha. if a Native person goes missing... They do the new feather alert, and there are still some work being done with that, um, trying to get those little um, creases ironed out about how that's going to work and making sure that police departments understand what that means, you know, how to identify a Native person as a Native person. Absolutely. And, and what that means and, and what criteria they have to see. And, and that's where things get a little bit tricky mm. is when they want to know, okay, how do you classify a Native? Do they have to have what? Braids. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> and a lot of people, um, they, they, the statistics on missing and murdered indigenous people are not even as clear as they could be because of that misidentification of people. Right. They don't classify them as native. If you don't look native, they'll mark you as Mexican, you know, right off the bat. They or don't, Mexican last yeah, name. Yeah, or, or Mexican last name. So they don't really, um, our, our women and indigenous men, they, they get um, thrown under, you know, yeah, they yeah. don't get to uh, be identified as clearly as what they are. Right, yeah. right. Well, I mean, hopefully uh, the more we talk about it, the more exposure we can bring to the situation. Yeah, so uh, definitely we're looking for more exposure to talk about Nicole Smith. Um, so I'll just go back a little bit about her. She was a mother of three. Um, her kids are grown now. One of her one of her sons was there in the house when my sister was murdered. And one thing that I like to say about what happened with my sister and what's important for our Native people to remember is when you're put in these situations and you have a loved one who's missing or murdered, there's two paths that you can take. And you can choose to let it bring you down or you can choose to let it empower you. And really, um, like it did me, you know, at the time of my sister's murder, I wasn't living in the best way that I should have been living. And um, at the time when that happened with my sister, it just totally um, changed the direction of, of my life. And it was for the better. You know, I didn't let my sister's murder take me in a bad path, down a bad path. I kind of just totally went in a different way. And I'm so honored that she was able to to do that for me. Yeah, she know. left you that gift. Yeah, and I would never um, disrespect the, her life that she gave. Absolutely. That day. And there's so many other things that could have happened, and there were so many children in the home. And I just like to think that she took that bullet for everybody, you know, to protect the kids. And I think when that happened with her, they, they scared themselves and, and they left. Mm. You know, so it was a really hard time. Uh, they were shot in the house. They, they did four shots. One through the door, two through the front window, and then one through my daughter's window where my sister was sleeping. 
yeah. So it was it was pretty hard to see and and to watch and to be um, in in that situation. Right. And, oh man, I don't wish that upon anybody. It was so hard. It was such a hard thing to be uh, to sit with your your sister like that. Yeah, I know? can imagine. And luckily, I can say that um, she didn't look she didn't look hurt and. She was shot with a bird shot, so I don't know if any any of you listeners know what that is. <clears throat> she didn't really... There was no physical wounds that I could see that looked dramatic. Right. Yeah, so it was a little bit hard to know that she was actually shot because I thought she was maybe having a seizure or something. But, yeah, so once they, they came and, and said she was gone, so... Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to keep bringing exposure. We're going to keep her legacy alive. Her children are here, and she deserves justice. Yes, justice she, she for deserves, Nicole Smith. Yeah, no doubt. Justice for Nicole Smith and uh, Bernadette. I'd like to thank you for sharing that with us. I know uh-huh. how hard it is. Yeah. I I couldn't even talk about my brother for the for uh, at least four years mm-hmm. until uh, you know I was able to talk to him without crying. You know, so oh, yeah. you, you're a really strong, resilient woman, and. I know that your dad passed that along to you, your 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 beliefs and your ways, right? Mm-hmm. Have contributed to the resiliency of, of who you are as a woman. And uh, I'd really like to thank you for sharing that with us here oh. at the Boss Car Joe oh, Show. That we you. know that's that's a really precious and dear memory for you. Yeah, it's really it is. And you know, we can never share enough about about our sisters going missing or murdered. It's just it just happens too often and it's easy to get caught up in the anger of, of you know that systematic racism, that uh, systemic racism that happens within Mendocino County. Well, a lot of counties. You know, there's a lot of racism that out there that that's embedded in people, and um, you see that come out when situations like this happen. I see it throughout everything, even in education. You know, in, in criminal activity, things like that. There's there's always this the stigma about native people and it's time to change that narrative for them, you know, and, and it's things like this park renaming, you right. know, things like that, bringing visibility to good native people to really change their perspective on how they see us. You know, they, they've seen us in this negative way for so long, not because we were negative people, but because of the things that they were taught, things that were embedded in their education and things they were passed down, you know, from their ancestors and, and their grandparents. Right. People that are still living today carry that with them. So um, being able to have them see the Native people in, in a good way, like this art festival happening here today, that's what brings that visibility. And, and that, in fact, <clears throat> in turn, is a solution, you know, right. to, um, to letting our people, yeah, be, be seen and be respected. And that's what it's all about. And, and that will carry on. You know, through the MMIW movement, um, through these police police forces, you know, right. they're going to see that. And we're right here, right next to one, you know, right, right. next to a police station. Exactly. So they're going to see the beauty of our Native people, the beauty of the culture. And right here in the town of Windsor, a few of my nieces have recently moved into the new Lit in Springs Rancheria right. that's right down the street. So, I mean, they're coming full force here. <laughs> yeah. And Koi Nation, I don't know if you heard about Koi Nation. They, they got some property right here in Windsor, too. Okay. Yeah, so they're coming in tough here. And <laughs> Pomos are coming in to get, Windsor. So hey, get used to it. Get used to it. Get some statues around here, too. That's right. <laughs> well, Bernie, Bernadette, I think that's a pretty good place to end there. Okay. Um, thank you again for sharing your heart with us and and uh, know that you're loved and respected, and, and we know that uh, your dad's legacy is in good hands. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Big O, Bernadette oh, oh, Smith. Oh, oh, oh. 